Play. Here we go. Fifteen now. Well, speaking of big surfs, Mark Philippoussis, courtside. Good afternoon, Mark. How are the conditions down courtside? Give us a, uh, a real feel. Uh, good afternoon, Robbie and Wally. I tell you what, it's... Uh, it says it's 21 degrees. Doesn't feel like it. It's closer. Feels like closer to 30. You know, it's a little swirly here. The uh, there's some wind, so it's definitely going to play a part. Um, you know, today's match. These stadiums are bowls. They sort of trap the heat. The court soaks up the heat, throws it back at you. I was sitting where Mark was last night. 15 degrees. The court had no life in it. Rublev could hit through it. Demon couldn't. But today, the big difference in conditions. I mean, it, it can affect results it when you're scheduled. Is. There's no question about it. I've sat in that position where Mark is in the day. It's just a, like a little heat trap. Court gets lively. You get a much higher bounce. We see that nice drop shot there from Borges. Ball travels through the air quicker. Top spin is rewarded. Importance of a good start against a world-class player always so important just to make yourself feel that you belong on the same stage as them. Forty thirty. Game. So, Daniil, up and running, looking a little bit more sprightly at the start of this match as to what he did at the start of the match against Felix Auger Ali Asim. Of course, all eyes on Nuno today. It's, he's been gracing the front pages of all the, the sporting newspapers back at home. He's, he's got his little piece, of course. A sports mad nation, you can imagine, that especially with football and Cristiano Ronaldo and all that he brings to Portugal it is generally front and centre. But he's carved out a nice portion of those front pages for himself, and rightly so. What? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great story, isn't it? Small nation, not a rich tennis history, and he's forging ahead in Grand Slam no, tennis. No, Plenty of support. In his previous match against Grigor Dimitrov and a sprinkling of Portuguese fans here at Rod Laver Arena. And Robbie, I just mentioned Rod Laver. I had the opportunity to bump into Ken Rosal this morning. He has come down for the second week. Nice. Another legend of Australian tennis and world tennis, obviously. So great to have him in the house. And for those of you that haven't seen a lot of Medvedev play, the eye-catching thing is his returning position. Nobody returns this deep in the court. And somehow, even though he gives up so much space, it's hard to serve around him. That's not a bad play for someone who's in the shadows. 
Yeah, when it comes to return leaders last year on a hard court, guess who was number one? Medvedev. It is incredible. I mean, to think that the slider serve out wide wouldn't put him in trouble on this side. Again, Rogers. And that return rate rating, in case you were wondering how. You look at a bit of everything, you know, the first serve return points, one second serve return points, one percentage of return games won, as well as how many break points you've converted. So that all goes into a melting pot. They give it a good stir and they pop out a rating. And his was the best on hard courts last year. Alex Dimonor and Novak Djokovic were hot on his heels. So just alluding to what you were saying, it might be different, but it's very effective. And I just noticed on your list there, Robbie, Yannick Sinner is number four. So Isn't these are some pretty significant names in world tennis. We talk a lot about the serve, and obviously the counterpoint to the serve is the return. How important is it? Well, the highest ranked players are the best returners. And he's an enigmatic tennis player, is Medvedev. It, it, it would be hard to teach the way he produces his shots. So here's Borges not feeding him any pace. We know Medvedev's a counterpuncher, but very capable of striping winners as well, creating his own pace. Long-limbed, generous swings. I do like the Medvedev serve too. It's, it looks like he's unwrapping a parcel. Sort of. All comes together nicely. What do you think? You know, talk about serving Medvedev. As you said, Wally, I, I'm a fan of his serve as well. I think he's got a beautiful ball toss, and that's where everything starts with. But where he's serving right now is definitely the toughest end. He's got the sun right now, and is also a little against the wind. Um... Ah! But uh, I definitely feel like, if you, yeah, you know, you've got the opponent serve on well, that side. You're thinking, hey, I've got an opportunity, and look to break. Pretty flat, pretty direct. Oh. From Medvedev, particularly on that first serve. Okay, Medvedev. Now six foot six is Daniel. Medvedev leads by two games to one. He needs two one in the opening set, two service holes. Robbie, I noticed two with Daniil. We know Rafa's got quite a lot of peccadillos when he's on the court. You know, he won't tread on lines, bottles in certain places. I noticed Daniil walks around the baseline, around the doubles line. He won't, I notice him when he walks out to play, he won't tread across that baseline. A little idiosyncrasy. Yeah, most players have a fair few of those. Can't be a... Superstitious bunch eating the same food, you know, the same restaurants. Of course, Okra has got his favorite restaurant here this week. It's a Spanish restaurant that is pretty popular. Time. Well, if I said uh, the ladies in pink are looking good, pink is my favorite color. Famous line from a great rock band.
Any idea who it might be? My favourite colour. Testing you there, Robbie. Fifteen up. <laughs> Got me. I told you the album was nine lives with that help. Well, you've given me a clue. Okay. Aerosmith. All right. It's wonderful acceleration. Anything over 150 is big. Medvedev versus some of the other top players when you're playing against them. I think if you're, you know, significantly lower ranked player as Borges is, at least with Medvedev, you still get the feeling that he allows you to play. Sinner doesn't. Ocaraz doesn't. It's so tough against the likes of Medvedev. They can blow you off the court, but not Medvedev. Well, look at his court position. Yeah. He, he gives you time to play. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Look where he's returning from. It's extraordinary. I like that, Robbie. If he's going to hang back there and you've got him on the run, he wants to just find a way back into the point, but deny Borges him time. So that's a nice move from Borges. Borges has acquitted himself really nicely at the start of this match. He hasn't come out nervous. When he first broke onto the toy, he was having initial success in doubles. That's the, the counter puncher. He stings you in the counter punch. I tell you what, boys, with uh, the, the in the ball so clean right now, it's just maybe a few inches over the net, nice depth. They're, they're seeing the ball well, considering we're only into a third game. This is it's impressive tennis. And Flip, I guess that's what happens. You enter the second week of a major, and everybody, provided they're not beaten up, they're on form. Yeah, Borges. Well, the good news for Borges as well is that he has had some experience against playing against world-class competition. I think it's Rui Machado. If memory serves, it's been a long time. But my first Davis Cup ties was against his coach. First tie ever played for my country against Team Portugal on memories. Lovely thing. So whatever Breeze benefit there is, Medvedev has that benefit from this end, right, Mark? Yeah, right now is with the wind. That ball toss a little too far forward and too low in the second serve. But yes, it's right now, I mean, this, it's swelling a little bit, but he definitely has the Breeze behind him right now. That's the Medvedev camp. Eric Hernandez on the right, Gilles Savara. Making some notes there, copious notes, there he is. 30-15. Well, going back regarding his movement shot selection, I mean, what's so impressive, not only hitting from back there, but reading the play, is it feel like sometimes he's moving before his opponent hits the ball. Oh. Fourteen, fifteen. Well, he must because he gives, he gives up so much room, so much time, and so much space. You can kind of see where the winner is or the the difficult shot is. But as you say, he he appears. He's always there. Big strides, good anticipation. 
big first serve. And he can cruise through service games very quickly when he is serving well. He's up 3 2. Yeah, that was the Medi Bay that we've got to look at there. Definitely heating up a little cooler initially today. You can see those trees moving quite aggressively in the breeze. The many junior matches will be in action as well. See the future of the sport up close and personal if you come the second week of the majors. All well, our attention starts to focus on the three show courts of Rod Labour, Arena, Margaret Court, and John Kane. Borges of Portugal. I was a standout junior tennis player. Doesn't come from a, a tennis background. His dad played a bit of uh, volleyball. Mom does the training of travel agents in the travel in industry. He wasn't a standout no, 15. player at a young age, decided to take the college tennis route and of course in 2015 enrolled at the university that is Mississippi State. And that's when he really started to, to take off. He's got a good tennis IQ this kid. You sort of you look at that distance that Medvedev gives you on return, and Mark has mentioned that Borges is serving from the end with the breeze. So you're kind of thinking, will we see a serve and volley? We haven't, but we are seeing the sneak. So when he feels like he's got him in trouble, a couple of quick steps in, and that's basically just taking a forehand out of the air. Same grip, same stroke production, no risk. Guys, what I love watching right now from Borges, I mean, he's doing a lot of things that, that are nice, but especially anything relatively short, he's not overthinking. He's bouncing right on top of it, no hesitation whatsoever. Well, you sort of think your, your mindset would have to be to come in. Short ball, if it's there to come in, he gives you space, come in. If he passes, you're too good. Because he, he, just, he frustrates people, Medvedev. He just makes so many balls. That if you just stay back and rally with him... Yeah, death by a thousand cuts. You, you, you just get worn down emotionally and physically. So if it's there to hit and come in, why not? If he passes it, too good. If, he's, if he can hit a passing shot from six metres behind the baseline, you take your hat off to him. Yep. Yeah, you like your boxing analogies. He just lots of jabs. Very calculated jabs. Whereas you play the likes of a center Alcaraz, guy's just giving you a haymaker. He's putting you on your back, isn't he? Yeah, he's throwing combinations, <laughs> is our friend Medvedev. He's got the knockout, but he's patient.
Deus. Amém. Mas não é diferente. Mas não é diferente. The, the headband or the sunnies? The sunnies. I thought those were the quad squad sunnies. The headband is not something you see a lot. No. Ben Shelton breaks it out. Well, um, he, he's not on the court. He's in the crowd. You okay. won't see a lot of headbands in the crowd. Yep. Lovely. Efficient. Smooth. Far four is forward. That's five. Great off the ball movement. Yes. Those two couple of serves, the ball toss is way too low. He gave out a little ah after the first serve. Unfortunately, the second one is any, it wasn't any better. But I'm just so impressed with how relaxed he looks right now under these conditions. And Flip, isn't it funny? We talk about players' serves. And when you're sitting and side there, you, you get to see it. exactly where the ball toss is in their, their action. Nine times out of ten, a bad serve is a bad ball toss because your motion actually never changes. It's where you put the ball determines so many things. If it's low, you've got to speed up to catch up. If it's too far out in front, you can't cover it with spin. Too far to the right, you can't kick it. Oh. That's a pity, given how well he has been playing when coming to the net. Method at least by four Guys, to do. that was probably going out by three metres at least. That, that ball, very surprised he, he hit that one. Was it indecision? Yeah, that yeah, was a strange yeah. miss. I think maybe he, 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 yeah, he might initially might have left it and then changed his mind, but that was going well out. And as a result of that indecision, that's Medvedev who gets the first break. Serving from the tougher end. 59. First serve percentage feels good for Medvedev. It's in the mid 60s. Another thing is, he said, I've got this court side, this angle, be able to really see the shape of the ball. And Borges is, is a really nice hitter of the ball, but he's got very small margin. It's very low over the net where Medvedev mixes it up to play so beautifully. You know, he mixes up the spin, he gets it high. So, um, you know. I just feel like one of those things where Borges is kind of playing on the red line, red line, especially someone like Medvedev, who sometimes feels like he baits his opponent in by giving him a shorter ball because he loves the target. Forty fifteen. Someone in the crowd just talking 30. right before Medvedev hit that forehand. You think that's why he missed it? Distraction. Slight, you can see. Someone called out, finish him right before that forehand. Let the serve. Yeah, 
You boss, please. So a strong start from the US Open champion of a couple of years ago. He leads 5-2 first set. Evidence in that last game of the margin that Mark was talking about. Four hands just finding the net. So as you might expect of a US college player, play a lot of their tennis and faster hard courts he's pretty direct that lack of margin just hurting him in those last couple of games have all the green area as well around the rod lever arena and in this tennis precinct so it provides a casualness a, a relaxed feeling it, it's just Fantastic. Uh -huh. Robbie, an Australian icon is being played right now on Rod Labor Arena as the players come out. Paul Kelly. Name of the song? That's good knowledge. You I've done all there. the dumb things. And haven't <laughs> we just? <laughs> Great title. Great title. Two five. You know, I love watching the Medvedev backhand up close. He's got the separation with the hands. So a bit of a gap, maybe half an inch to an inch gap between his hands on that backhand. And he makes little manipulations. There you see a good shot of it there. He'll make manipulation through the swing with that left hand to sort of, you know, determine the shot. It's very clever. I mean, most players, they, they produce a shot. It's like a train coming down the line. Once they start, it doesn't stop. But with Medvedev, there's these little subtle... Variations, particularly on that backhand side, it's so clever. Bit more left hand, bit more hook. Just does whatever's necessary. right play though absolutely he has missed a couple and but he's been very successful up until that point he was five from five so let's hope he continues to come in when the opportunity presents itself because he's not going to win from the back it's got to be an all-court game You know, just, just watching this match, it's just so interesting. Borges has had some amazing wins to get here, obviously, in the fourth round, around the 16, you know. But previous players, for instance, Grigor and, and Fokina, they're shot makers. They kind of like to hit hard and move forward. And, and maybe there's just a whole other animal. Gives you nothing, you know. And I just think right now it just looks a little, you know, going for, for a little too much, but doesn't look comfortable right now oh. he's like a sponge isn't he maybe if he just soaks everything up mm -hmm. that's how good it's got to be if you want to get it by him juice. that's to get to juice to be on the red line to save a break point. Yeah, he's got to hit the white line. Thank you. Right. 
That's a stunning combination of shots. Just improving his position in the rally incrementally with each and every shot. Advantage. Rogers. As we hoped, nice to see him continue to make those forays forward. Ball. Yeah, it? It's a good hold. Force. Leads five games to three. to try and serve this one out. Yeah, a little more margin um, from the ground strikes there, especially on the forehand side from Burgess. And, and I love the fact that he came in. That juice point was huge, finishing off at the net, showing some nice hands. And, you know, let's not forget, he's lost two points. But those two you. points, normally he would win at least nine out of ten times, that forehand volley and that smash. Definitely, uh, you know. I think that something that he needs to continue is without a doubt coming towards the net. Ball. About 15. Ball. Well, too ambitious. Second serves, two double faults. Very flat second serves, no, not too much spin. Ball. So he, he goes for a couple of big second serves, doesn't make them, misses his next two first serves, and we've seen two huge second serves draw errors, so full of confidence. Didn't doubt himself at love 30, nothing safe. Again, nothing spectacular from Medvedev, just rock solid. 40, 30. We saw this against Auger Aliassim. Seemed like when he needed a point, needed a game, he had it. Stunning. That was 204. Pretty good first serve. Yes. Not so much the pace of the return, just the direction. That's Tim Meribe. Hugo Anayo will be delighted with the way that his charge is hanging around here. Thank you. How about that for a line licker?
It's always interesting to me when a player has a ball that easy, why you wouldn't just bury it into the open court. There's no way he can cover the open, so he stays. Really pinch the point. Yeah, and for sets. Gets in the end after a couple of double faults. And the first set has gone the way of the number three seed. Six games to three. And my favourites. It's got to be Wanaka Tennis Club down in the South Island of New Zealand. When you talk about picturesque settings, it's definitely a top five seed. Oh. Love 15. Got a little over his head. Is that because there's some great trout fishing nearby, Robbie? You're no. a little biased? No, I'm um, strictly tennis is the criteria here, Wally. Uh, mountains on the one side, the lake in the background. It's spectacular setting. Now you get to individual tennis courts that aren't some spectacular venues, but clubs. Nothing better than playing at a club with great scenery around. But, Robbie, I've seen you at the Monte Carlo Country Club in your linen suit, cravat, little pocket handkerchief, <laughs> sipping a latte. You look the part. Nice swinging serve. I still enjoy it. Good hit, nice sweat. Still love my tennis. You realise what a great sport it is. It, you haven't played for a while, you're so everywhere. Yeah, continues to impress in the four courts. And we're up and running in set number two. You know, Borges, the one game to love lead. But, of course, something that uh, Wally has already highlighted is how far back this guy returns. Sir, you come out the tunnel and you're in line with where Medi's returning. So we are getting a couple of second serves there at four metres behind the baseline. We're five, six, seven metres behind the baseline. It is unbelievable how much room he gives up. And you think... He's susceptible to angles. But not a lot of people can manage it. But you know who did? It was our good friend Novak Djokovic in the US Open final. Yep. Serve volleyed him beautifully. Ah. A lot of wide serves out to the forehand. Yep. Especially on that juice court. Yep. Midway through the third set, that's when Medvedev and Gilles Savara, he was, you know, palms up and Gilles was going, no. That's on you. You needed to change things up. Ah. And the only thing I would say to that, Wally, is that he was one point away from being set all right against Djokovic. Yeah, yeah. So despite the fact that Djokovic was, was getting to him with that seven volley, he was oh so close to being on a par. Oh, and I'm not suggesting it's a blueprint for victory. I'm no. just saying no, it's no, no. a... I, I agree. It's a possibility. I'll yes. Um, Robbie, I always find the wide serve interesting because if you serve it at around 170, 175, the side spin takes effect. So with every revolution, it's getting a little further away. But so many players go 180, 190 wide. Too much forward momentum. You don't actually get the cut. Oh. Now, Manorino is the best. He's a little cheesy lefty, but he never overserves it. Always lets the side spin do the work. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a good pattern golf. You've got to marry the pace with the break, right? I wasn't getting much help yesterday from uh, my teammate, Colin Fleming. Because I think you, you returned the ball to the net. This was also the last ball. Next time you have to ask me earlier, then, I, then I'm going to request it for you. 
wasn't sure about that last ball at his feet. Yeah. He uh, was game just game. asking, I guess it's too late for a replay. He wanted to have a look at it, and he said, yeah, it's a little too late. Yeah, no video review this year. All the line calling is done electronically. I also love the fact we have the singles nets in play. Opens up the round the net shot. We've seen a couple of those already this week. Al Karaz did it twice in his second round match. Demon had an amazing get round the net post last night. Again, great to see Borges moving forward to the net. You know, it's no surprise he's comfortable at the net. Like you guys said, going through the, you know, playing in college, you play a lot of tennis, singles and doubles there. You know, I think coming to the net is actually the ultimate percentage play. So you're because basically just saying, here I am, pass me. If you do, too good. Put the ball in the right spot. Put yourself in the right spot at the net. Make them play the hardest shot possible. But you mustn't miss the approach. You must not miss the approach. And I like that about Nuno's game today. He has not overplayed the approach. He just keeps making them. on guard duty nothing's getting by him and guys he got down so beautifully not only for both volleys especially for that first forehand volley which wasn't uh, uh, overly easy one and covered the line beautifully done oh. Twice now he's missed the drop shot, so you, probably a little bit like the approach. Don't miss it. You'd rather hit a bad drop shot than actually miss it. He's got a long way to cover. Even if it's not perfect, he'll push him forward to a part of the court that he'd probably rather not be in. You, you know, we're, we're back at the margin right now. It's become very flat. His backhand is a naturally very flat shot, but his forehand, he can give it shape, but, but it's, it's just very flat right now. And, and like I said, zero margin. You know, he's against the wind right now. You can afford to get under it to give it more. Speaking of margin, how's the margin on Medvedev shots there? Just the right amount of spin, Medvedev. height. You know the scary thing is, well, he, he looks like he's warming up at times. He looks like he's hitting <laughs> yeah. a 50% shot. And he's just saying, all right, I want you to try hitting this harder. I'll be there. And I'm, no, I've got this one as well. Go try again. <laughs> you know, my old coach used to say to me, never seen a man to do a boy's job. That's Medvedev to a T. 
you don't have to come out of your shoes, don't. Just put it where it needs to be. So once again, we've seen him miss a couple in this game, but it's the right shot. So he doesn't go into his shell. He pulls trigger again. Medvedev looked like he'd settled into one of those rallies where he was just going to outpatient his opponent, but that was brave. Break point down. how to execute the slider wide and then just come in and cherry pick the volley into the open court you know Medvedev nearly made contact next to the Rolex sign at the back right there with his racket I mean look how far back he is makes for an easy volley there doesn't it just got to put the strings on the on the ball you've got the whole court oh. Great tennis craft. Fans are loving the show that they're putting on. And Borges is playing his part. Borges needs to get to one. Well, Mark's talked about the trajectory of Borges. So that's hard court, that's college. But the drop shot, the clay court has played that well. So maybe that's the nice blend of his youth. The ability just to soften the hands and play the drop shot. It's been effective. His youth growing up in Portugal on the clay. Yeah, Wally, that's that's definitely the side to do it on. You're against the wind, but also the, those last two drop shots. He just had a lot more air on those drop shots. The ones he missed were very flat, and uh, and as soon as they hit the court, they just sucked back right away. So great feel, especially that one on the break point to come up. With that shot after that rally and, and to have the confidence after those two missed drop shots, that was very gutsy. There's no doubt about it. Nuno has a plan. He has lost the first set, but he's not going down meekly. He's got an idea of how he wants this match to play out. We've seen him move forward on numerous occasions successfully. He knows how to do it. He knows how to transition. The drop shot has been effective. Pretty good display so far from Nuno Borges. Love 15. Fifteen on. Mentioned the fact he's been a major champion. He's 
also topped the rankings for 16 weeks. Did Daniil Medvedev. Has he been back there? That's not going to cut it. First place here, number three in the world. And he's actually one of three players in contention for the post Australian Open number one ranking, along with Alcaraz and Djokovic. So there's uh, a chance he might get back there. You know, we spoke about it a lot, Robbie. You're not a big fan of coming in that forehand, and that was such a good forehand from Borges. And even with Medvedev so far back, it still leaves that cross court open. Doesn't it just mock? I mean, the only counter to that is, as you know, the net player running to cover that cross court in the hope of anticipating. Game just like that. You're snuffed out. Half chance. Not to be mentioned. He was a college standout, this young man. Played in the finals of the NCAA singles final back in 2019. He actually lost to Paul Jubb of Great Britain. It was a big upset. This guy was the top dog back then in college tennis. Many accolades. But he said the, the match that hurt him the most at college was actually losing in the semi-finals of the NCAA Championships the year before. <laughs> Lost to Porno Goyo. Three match points in the semis. Got served three aces. He said he couldn't get it out of his head. Couldn't believe that could happen. It was all over him. Well, he can forget about it now. He's in the uh, second week of the Australian Open. Yep. Playing the number three player in the world and giving a pretty good account of himself. That person. Yeah, and a shout out to Borna Goyo, who's been having a, a good career himself, trending in the right direction. Goyo, another player whose ranking is inside the top 100, currently number 89 in the world. Hails from Croatia. He's a big boy. Was he here this week? Well, I'm going to say it was going in. One of the, one of the hard things when you serve thing. volley a player this deep is when to split your step. It's such an unusual visual. You've almost got to split your step as he makes contact and then move accordingly. On that occasion, he just sort of charged the net to make ground. Borges wrong-footed. <laughs> He's doing a nice job, though, of moving forward, thing. not overplaying the approach. Yeah, in fact... Goyo had to pull out, didn't he? It was a lucky loser that got in for him. He had a stress fracture. So we didn't get to see the best of Borna here down under. Oh. It's always hard for a, a, a lesser ranked player. You come out on a big show court, you've got to play, you know, one of the stars of the game, one of the top seeds. So before you get out there, you're almost thinking you've got to do more. You've got to play way above yourself to stay with him. 
But what's impressed me about Borges today is he, he's got a plan and he's just playing within himself. Yep. Let second serve. Like he's made a few errors on the forehand, but that's probably technical as much as tactical. He's a little flat on that forehand side. So there it is again, just a you know, little bit direct on occasion, but the way he's structuring his points is really good. He's taking yes. advantage of Medvedev's deep court position. It's not easy to do. A lot of players have trouble hitting through or around Medvedev, but we've seen the combination of moving forward to the net. We've seen the drop shot. He stung him with a couple of forehand winners. Been a really good display from the, the man from Portugal. And he's probably not a natural volleyer. Advantage. He's not a bad volleyer, but every now and then he'll miss a volley when he's not coming in in complete control. Just sort of charges it, runs right through it. The split step, the balance is important. Couple of loose errors brings up a break point. Ball. some very big hitting and, and that's got to be the, the, the side that has to approach on that off forehand and it hits it beautifully but coming in that last one it was a big forehand but when you're coming in off a flat shot like that it doesn't give you a lot of time to get to the net It's tricky. Not coming in completely on your own terms. He was mid-court. And I know you don't like coming into the forehand, Robbie, but that was coming in cross-court. There's a lot of angles you have to cover from that yep. part of the court. Yeah, I don't mind coming into the forehand if it is the same side of the court as yourself. Well, he was over near the sideline. Exactly. So to, to hook that cross-court and then try to cover the court was problematic. Big, huge play, guys. I'm happy he won that point because we don't want him coming on the forehand side. And if he had lost that point coming on the backhand, the yeah. poor guy, he's got nowhere to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else is there left? Well, I guess, I guess it essentially coming in line, approach line. It's funny with Borges, isn't it? There's quite a big difference between his best and his worst forehand. Sometimes a player might shank a ball and then, you know, you can miss by a big margin, but every now and then a, the ball will come out of the middle of the racket, but it'll be an extravagant miss on that forehand wing. But when he gets it right, it's, it's a cracker. Ball.
love the fact yes. he's not 100% coming in, but it's in his advantage. And he's made up his mind if the space is there, he's coming. I mean, what a fantastic point. Great slider out wide for a second there. I thought, oh, I could have seven volleyed, but that forehand open court like that, Medvedev, I don't even think he saw daylight. He was in the shade the whole time. Great play. Oh, he took that yeah. shot well. Pulverized that forehand. And the man from Portugal has a 3-2 lead, second set. It's great play from Borges. Accurate serve. There's Medvedev in the shadows. Standing in the shadows. Open court forehand. Look at the time that Medvedev gives you, courtesy of his depth in the court. He's a metre inside the baseline. Nothing extravagant. Open court. This is a lovely point to clip up if you're looking at being a good net player because you can anticipate the cross-court forehand. You're going to hit down the line, come in. And if Medvedev is there, where's the most likely passing shot going to come? He's probably going to hook that cross. Yeah. So, you're again, you're ahead on both those patterns of play. Time. So, uh, that one's good for the coaching manual. Let's look at the player pod. That's yeah, uh, the player restaurant. A couple of offices just below that, but... Uh, just adjacent to the Rod Levo Arena. As all the action is. They've had plenty to cheer this week because their man, Nuno Borges, has had some good wins. With Max Martyra in the opening round. Thank you. Alejandro Davidovich for Kina. Go Dimitrov. Borges by making it through the round of 16 here. Just the second player, man or woman from Portugal, to reach the round of 16 at a major. Of course, the other guy was João Sousa, who did it at both the US Open and Wimbledon. Oh. Car's good enough, doesn't need lady luck as well on his side. As is standard in the game of tennis, we apologize for a net court. Nobody, it's not authentic, but it's a nicety. You're saying it's the most meaningless gesture in our sport, Wally? Yeah. We have yet to see any player say, hang on, I don't want that point. Have it. You have it. Oh. 
Yeah, net better. Three games on. Gilles Savora, front and centre. Gaiton on the left. Yes, uh, the physio. Eric Hernandez. Top left, Oli van Lindonk, who has been his agent for a number of years now. As Oli, he's been around a long, long time. One of the best in the business. Was he Boris's agent? No. Sharapova's agent? No. He was... Who am I mistaking him for? Thomas Johansson, back in the early days. Okay. Uh, oh. Kenny Shikori. So he's had a good stable. Oh, yeah. Robbie, I think he was Sharapova's too. Oh, my bad, Mark. I thought that was Max. Max Eisen, but was uh, Sharapova's agent. But of course, part of the IMG fraternity is Oli. So uh, I stand corrected. Uh, I, I think I, I remember playing an exhibition in Vegas with Andre. She was there, and, and he was by her side. So maybe, I don't know if it was too long, but uh, at some stage. At some stage. Been a winning tactic. The drop Fifth shot. Time. So he's well inside the court. Doesn't overplay it. Oh. So the other night we, we called Felix Auger Aliasim up against Medvedev and we were saying, Felix, you've got to shorten the points. Felix tried to shorten the points by just going hard, harder, hardest. Nuno is shortening the points by coming forward and playing the drop shot. So how do you shorten the points? Well, you have to think your way through it. You have to earn the right to move forward or play the drop shot, but Nuno is doing it well. Makes sense, doesn't it? What did you think? Your man is in the shadows, five and six meters behind. This is the final. Doesn't really attempt to pass, just kind of fires it at him. He's five or six meters behind the baseline, so the drop shot makes sense. Oh. He's got a piece of the line. But yes, definitely, it's the right play. I mean, uh, but still, you know, meters behind the baseline, and he still makes you hit that one more shot. He still makes you hit that pass. It's a joke, right? When you see it courtside, Mark, it's hard to believe how good he is from back there. Because his good friend yes. Andre Rublev, who we saw in action last night, calls him uh, the octopus. That's what it's like playing against him. His tentacles are everywhere. Tell some great stories about when they used to play sets against each other oh. when they were eight, nine, ten years of age. Advantage. He's done a good job of fighting off break points, has Borges. And there's a reason for everybody's ranking, and just every now and then the margins aren't there on the ground shots, and he finds the net more often than he will find it long or wide. That speaks to his hard court background in US college. Putting pressure on himself here. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. 
Once again, the forehand leaks you and unforced error. Unfortunately, at the most inopportune Medvedev time for Nuno. For three. Daniel Medvedev by set and a break now. Nothing better than a full house at the Rod Laver Arena. Of course, the 112th edition of the Australian Championships, which began way back in 1905. It's the 55th Australian Open. And for the 37th year, we are here at its current home. That is Melbourne Park. Robbie, we like our sport down under. We're a very new country. Yes. But already in the 1800s, we had the Melbourne Cup. We had the Sheffield Shield Cricket. We had the Australian Open, the New South Wales Open. Wow. Organised sport came very quickly to the colony. Love it. in the sports that uh, you play in, of course, current cricket. If you know. World Cup champions. Won it a few times, have the Aussies. Rugby, not so much lately, but you have won it. Tennis, pretty good. There's that forehand. Just every now and then when he can't hit it on his own terms, he probably just needs to be... A little more willing to flight that forehand. Very good when he takes it on the rise. Gorges. There's the difference when he steps in, takes it on the rise. There's energy in the ball. That flat good trajectory job. will work. When it's dropping. Fine margins. When it's dropping. Just got to brush up the back and create your own pace and margin. So, Robbie, we've got the counter puncher here. We've got the aggressor. We talk about tennis. There's so many facets to the game. Who's the most complete player you've ever seen? Male or female? The guy that, or girl, that could do it all. Defend, attack, slice, top spin, serve volley, stay back, counter punch. Be the aggressor. Is there anyone that springs to mind? I mean, Roger Federer was he pretty went close, close, didn't he? Yeah. You'd have to give the nod to Federer. I think so. Next, second serve. For just the array of shots and the array of tactics that he could deploy. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, out of the blue, a loose service game from Mr. Medvedev. Yeah, he started the previous service game with two double faults. Decided to bookend it with. That untimely one.
Things getting interesting here in the second. I always find drop shots got harder to play the tighter the situation. They just require Love it in. such soft hands, so much feel. If a bit of tension creeps in courtesy of the scoreline, they just become a little harder to play. When those misses come, they tend to be more in the net and well, long. That, we talk about him with a little pace taking it on the rise. That ball had absolutely no pace. So you've got to create your own. Brush up the back of the ball. He doesn't like to do that. He wants to be direct. If you're judging. Speaking of direct, 202. Yeah, quicker serve of the match that was. Guys, just sitting down here, it's interesting how quickly conditions are changing. Like that sun will go behind the clouds. Condition, you know, will get colder now it's out. The winds drop down, then the wind will pick up. It's constantly changing. I like Borges. He's in there hustling. I mean, this is not an easy volley. But, but it's the right it. one, right? Yeah. Down the line. Keep the ball on the same side of the court as yourself. Yep. Be ready for the cross-court pass on the next one. <laughs> Outstanding. What an athlete. What creativity. What hand skills. Yes. And you talk about what an athlete Medvedev is, Robbie, and he really is in terms of endurance because he covers so much territory courtesy of his depth in the court. He covers a lot of ground. He's deceptively quick. He's a hard man to tire out, it seems. Mm -hmm. oh. Got him again. Another forehand on a laundry line. This does not deviate on its path. You know, anything less is just coming back. I mean, that, that, that's how good he is. But what a shot! He had some acceleration behind that one. Oh. In case you're wondering what kind of payday this could be for Borges, if he were to lose today, 375,000 Australian dollars is what he would take home. If he were to win, a quarter finalist is guaranteed 600,000 Aussie dollars.
Wow, well, guys. I mean, the hitting, the stepping in. I mean, yeah, as, much as, as much as as much as Bojo's game and his physicality is impressing me, one of the biggest things is his mindset. You know, he just goes back to work. He misses a shot. Yeah, it doesn't seem to, to bother him. He continues to be aggressive. Incredibly positive body language. It's great to see. Ball. That is a big hold. And the man from Portugal is very much in this fight. He will sit down with a 5-4 lead in the second set, the first set to Medvedev. Just having a look at that final forehand from Borges. And, and to Mark's point, the great thing is he's identified a couple of ways forward to come in, to play the drop shot, and he... He accepts he's not going to win every one of those points, but he's not deviating from his plan. Oh, just on the left of the shot there, the EMCG cricket crowd. Yeah. The great cricket stadiums and the sport of cricket. It's just spectacular. Look at that. Time. There's a certain spinner from Melbourne who weaved his magic there. He's no longer with us, and Shane Warne. What a play he was. Nice shot there, Robbie, of the Melbourne CBD. And uh, going back into the early days of the colony, Robbie, all the money was in Victoria. A couple of big gold rushes down here. Oh, is that right? And all the wealth was in Victoria, but... Um, a lot of discussion should Melbourne actually become the capital of Australia, but there was a real tug of war between Sydney and Melbourne, so they placed the capital directly in the middle in Canberra. Oh. Always a healthy tension between the two states. <laughs> <laughs> but courtesy of those gold rushes, Melbourne was where it was at in the 1800s. the point so well big meters covered by Medvedev in this point but as you said he's fast he's got big strides he covers that ground effortlessly does Medvedev and he's six foot six so you've got to get that ball up sharply just couldn't quite control the lob There was something in the last point after he lost, he missed that return. He looked at his box and then on to the umpire and said something. So he's not, Borges is uh, not happy about something, but I'm not sure. I've got no idea what that is right now. Oh. Not asking for the trainer. I hope not. I hope it's uh, maybe just some movement behind uh, Medvedev that they put him off. I'm not sure, but I definitely hope it's not, not the trainer. I wonder if this match will take on either maybe her catch or Arthur Kazar or France. 
currently doing battle on the John Kane Arena. Five all first set. He's had a great strike rate with that drop shot. Plays yeah, it at the right are. time and he just moves forward to create that illusion. Make it a little bit harder for Medvedev to find space. Can't just push it back into the court. Cuts off the angles by moving a few meters into the court, does Borges after the drop shot. Oh. It's just been a master class on the fourth court. And it just shows you when you have solid skills, but you have good tennis intelligence. When you put those together, you can definitely become a top 50 player. His live ranking now, 47. It'll be a career high for the man from Portugal. And I'm just trying to think, has he missed an approach? I don't think he has. He has not overplayed. Keeps asking the question. sixes and sevens you can see towards the end of the rally Medvedev is looking for that forehand approach down the line isn't he not a bad play well, here it's a change up isn't it he just smokes this straight down the middle of the court so you talk about tennis IQ Medvedev had anticipated but he's actually wrong footed giving a great account of himself out here this afternoon Nuno Borges You know, the way he's hitting the ball, as hard as he's hitting the ball, you're going to get some of those shots, and that's okay. Continue to be aggressive. Yes, it'll be nice to give it a little bit more shape on the ball, a little more height over the net, but, I mean, if there's a time to do it, I guess it's 40-15, but two breaks where he's gotten broken, and he has been up, so hopefully he doesn't lose focus. I'm sorry, Robbie. I, I, I'm just sitting here with my mouth open a little bit because 
I didn't think that shot was on, to be honest with you. I mean, my God, that had to be absolutely perfect. And again, Medvedev let him, making sure he hits one more ball. What a point. He put his hand up as if to apologize. Did that drop shot clip the tape? He just apologizes there. Uh, I, I, I would say no, if, if anything, maybe kiss it a touch, but I could hardly tell. But uh, he shouldn't apologise there. That's just, that's just too good. Had time to adjust his sleeve. Come in, play the volley. He's enjoying himself out here. Yeah, his off-the-ball movement is just so intelligent. It was funny, after that shot, he apologised. Medvedev wasn't looking at him, walking straight ahead, but just was nodding his head <laughs> as he was walking to the change of ends. I don't know where, uh, can't believe, can't believe that shot or, or what, but, uh, I mean, there's some serious tennis being played, and they're using every part of this court. The no. apology, but it's uh, Mark was talking about. Medvedev doesn't want to know anything about it. Upwards and onwards. I'm not interested in your apology. <laughs> I don't accept it. <laughs> Big discrepancy in the rankings, and Medvedev is having a tough time of it in this second set. But he, he's not looked frustrated at all, Medvedev. He's calculating as ever. The Chicago Bulls hats on. Tends to stick with the one hat for the tournament for the most part, does Gilles? Sometimes he does change it up depending on day session or night. I like to keep a bit of symmetry there. We have seen Borges as the aggressor, the playmaker. Mm -hmm. Fine margins on the drop shot. We've seen him flatten out the forehand and get some real value, come to the net, play some telling volleys. Can he maintain that level? With, ten with the tension of a tiebreak. Let's wait and see. It would appear so. Not deviating One zero. from his plan. Borges. Nuno Borges, it's short, I'm coming. And he has done that nicely, just Putting the volley in the right place, not overplaying. Yeah, Nick points one for this set. Wally, I can tell you, 20 of 24 for the total for the match, 26 out of 32. I mean, against the go passes as well as Medvedev. That's testimony to how intelligent his net play has been. Pace on the cross court backhand. It, was there on it wasn't extravagant. That one there, just a little more pace. Caught him by surprise. Up the ante. Two one. Borges. You know, just watching Medvedev, he looks like he's rushing, especially on the service points in service games he grabs a ball hardly goes to get his towel doesn't take too much time but when he needs to he finds that serve
And that is going to happen. If you're trying to make Too things wrong. happen, the margins are fine. There's a little bit of tension. We have to expect that from Borges a little bit in this tie break. Just can't afford too many of them. And Mark, isn't that a refreshing change? We're one hour and 38. We've nearly completed two sets, and one of those sets obviously in the tiebreak. And in terms of match duration, the speed of the Medvedev play is good. Yes. Between points. Oh. He, he probably should have stopped. Medvedev. Did you see the ball boy just fumble the ball? He fumbled the ball. Should have stopped. Reset. Yeah, what a shame after working so hard and two incredible points to start off and all of a sudden three two down a mini break. He just needed to reset. Think of Novak and how he would have stopped, bounced the ball, got himself back in the zone. So a flurry. If I can use that collective now, Robbie, a flurry of points for Medvedev. Some errors coming off the Borges racket after a crisp start to the tie break from the man from Portugal. Just chasing a bad ball toss. Three, oh, Wally, that thing was terrible. Not only was it so far in front, but it was just above his nose. Anything that far out in front, you just can't cover it with spin. The net beckons. I mean, the right play, guys, but just didn't do enough with this short ball. You know, too much in the middle of the court. And uh, that pace was just too much for him. Medvedev really accelerated through that one. That approach shot I prefer him off the inside out there. Lowest part of the net. Five for four. Medvedev hit that one beautifully. Well, we've seen the range from Medvedev. We've seen the, the big flat accurate first serves, but we've seen plenty of doubles. If he goes for that first serve and misses, just a little added pressure. See how he approaches it. There it is, 198, flat down the tee. 6-4, Medvedev. Backs himself. Thank you. And Medvedev wants all the balls on his side of the court. <laughs> and the ball kid was not happy about that one. <laughs> He said, you leave it to me. I'll decide where the balls go. Two set points. Ah. And Medvedev takes the two sets to lovely with another serve of rich quality. And he's very much in charge of proceedings now. Determined, Wally. Well, whoever served first in the tiebreak, it's not him. If my memory serves me correctly, it's been a while since I've played one. That's right, Robert just Dean. checking. Robbie, do you think I'm getting dementia? No. A 
just a reminder, the winner of this match will take on either Arthur Cazot or Hubi Hurkacz. The opening set there went to a tie break. Hubi just sneaking it out. Wow. Is that his first volley for the afternoon? 15 30. Says he's been to the nets on. But he's yeah. been brought in. Yes. This is coming in on his terms. Yeah, that's his first volley. An aggressive volley, too. He went after that one. That, that's a collector's item. You don't see him up there too often. Physical. And we will learn a little bit more about Nuno Borges now because he's Sergio. played awfully well for two sets, the highest quality against one of the great retriever counter punches in the game. Where does he go from here? Does he stick to task? Does he get frustrated? Yeah, the point on Forster is starting to, to mount now for Nuno. 26 of those bad boys out of a total of 38. Oh. It's an onerous comparison against, though, with Medvedev, isn't it? Because Medvedev's not trying to make things happen necessarily. We could give Borges some of those errors for creating, being the aggressor. If I'm helping a player, yes. I don't mind if they make an error if there's a reward. 30, but I don't like them making an error if there's no reward, like a rally ball. Yep. And you would say that Borges had made some errors on that forehand looking for a reward. The reward yes. was there, he just didn't execute. Has missed a few rally balls, courtesy of his trajectory, which is pretty flat, but all in all, he's given a great account of himself. Advantage, Medvedev. You know, just sitting here and watching Borges, he has, he's staying in the same place as far as returns the whole match, but I, I, first of all, I would like to see him maybe stay one foot back have a little more time to look at it. I don't know. Must be a nice feeling, though, to have the number yes. three running on the ropes, yep. pushing him around. I was just thinking about that, Wally. You know, compare the match that Medvedev had to play against Felix Aliasim in the previous round. How much more experience Felix got, how much more firepower he's got. Yet, you get the feeling that this match has been way tougher for Medvedev. Oh, I agree. Felix just Advantage. couldn't Medvedev. sustain pressure. Borges is asking a lot of questions of Medvedev. It's interesting, Mark talks about his return position. He, it's such an American hard court stance, isn't it? Yep. Aggressive stance. Not willing to take a backward step. 
<laughs> he wants some help from the big guy as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, the guy's down two sets to love. You know, it's nice to have a little bit of luck for sure, but I love that reaction from everything. Please, some for me. Oh. There's a lot going on. The big guy mightn't be paying attention to this match. Oh. Really. Oh, yes. oh. It was like Medvedev had a magnet just drawing the ball to him. I mean, the guy is moving before his opponent Medvedev. hits the ball and he's there. I mean, unbelievable. Just that ability to put that extra ball in play. Well, if you're going to return yes. a 200 kilometer hour serve on the first serve like that, definitely do not change where you're standing that was just turn of the shoulders blocking the ball back using his opponent's pace what a great return oh. Medvedev is doing some serious work in this game. And for, you know what I like about his return? I've watched Alcaraz trying to be aggressive on return, and he, he takes an aggressive court position, and then he kind of charges the ball, moves forward, and he gets rushed. Borges has got an aggressive position, but he just stands nice and tall, and he waits for the ball to come onto him with a strong base and then just uses the pace. It's really clean. He's also cutting off the angles beautifully with that V motion. An absolute beauty from Borges. Medvedev gave him a little look, as if to say, okay. come on. He's just got a subtle flick of the wrist on that backhand. He disguises it so well. Good response after losing the tiebreak. Love that low camera angle, it just gives you a great look at the trajectory, what the players are facing. Not, not the best shot, but uh, again, so impressive. Two sets to love down, he goes in, changes. It's so easy to say, okay, I'm playing Medvedev. Just made it to the round of 16 that's thrown open. Yeah, I should be proud of myself. It's, you know, I'm happy. It's time to go home.
you right, Flip. It's so easy for an emerging player Love having their first big taste of success to give themselves a little pat on the back. I mean, he would look at the check that Robbie has mentioned already of 375 and be satisfied. There's no disgrace in losing to Medvedev, but he's he's competing. He's striving for the win, no question. And, and what I love, the very first point in the last game, when they've come out, he wins the point. Love 15 looks at his box and fist pumps. The very first point he wins. I mean, I love it. Your attitude determines your altitude in life. This guy's attitude has been wonderful, not only today, but in his previous matches as well. Oh. Robbie, you've called a lot of Medvedev matches. Is, is it my imagination, but he hasn't really employed the backhand line very often today, Medvedev. Normally it's a real feature of his play. Yeah, I would put that down, and you are right. He tends to employ it more when guys have bigger forehands from that yeah, backhand that corner. And I don't think he feels as threatened by Nuno's forehand. So, you know, even if he does get a forehand from the backhand side, he, he doesn't feel threatened. I actually think it wouldn't be a bad a bad play because Nuno to me seems to like to tuck his elbow quite close to the body. Wouldn't mind just seeing him hit a few forehands on the run where he's yes. really got to extend that arm out. Probe there a bit more, especially given the number of unforced errors he's made. I've got a te text message from on social media. Dave from Brisbane reckons Nuno Borges looks like a young version of Pete Sampras. Style, just in appearance. Swarthy, dark. Yeah. Well, there's certainly some similarities. The curly hair. He's got the laser-like focus. Would have liked Pete's forehand. That one wasn't too bad. Here's the test <laughs> for Borges. Medvedev just, he just is so consistent throughout. He just keeps coming. You can't lose belief or focus. Can't rack up the errors. Just have to play at such a high level for such a long period of time to stay with him. Let's I'm really big on the ball toss, Robbie, on the yeah. serve. And you've, rightly so, you've Wally. You've got to keep your body under the ball. Yep. You've got to do the work under the ball, and then it's up and over. Unless, of course, you're Ivo Karlovic or John Isner. You can pop it down into the court. Goes line a few times there, does Medvedev, not, not with any real authority. Of course, Borges handled it pretty well. And I say that, Robbie, because he's thrown in a few doubles today, Medvedev, and his first serve has been impressive, and his first serve winning percentage has been impressive, but that second serve has not really been on song. It's below 50% on second serve points one.
Porters has done given a better job of going after that second serve of Medvedev in the two service games in this third set. Daniel only two of eight points won behind that second delivery. Let the serve. Advantage Medvedev. Yeah, Medvedev. Yeah, finally a new boss, please. And return first serve. That's always Medvedev nice. Please. Two games to one. Medvedev 2-1 and by two sets to love. Just saw Borges in the previous game. We watch the backhand of Medvedev. He was stretching out his quads. New territory. Fourth round of a slam. Consecutive best of five set matches. It's wearing. Fatigue. It's not an injury, it's just fatigue. Yeah, almost eight hours is his time spent on court coming into this round of 16 match for the Portuguese. Medvedev, of course, just over nine hours. Remember that second round match against Emil Rusvori? Four hours, 23 minutes. That's why his numbers are so high with total time on court. Yeah. Time. Match just over two hours. Been pretty physical. And Mark, from where I'm sitting up here in the commentary booth, I can see your long legs in the sun there. How are you travelling? You've sort of been baking away there for the last couple of hours. You know what? For uh, ten seconds, I was thinking about wearing pants this morning, and thank God I didn't because I would have been hurting. But look, it, it, it is. It's hot here. It's hot. Like you said, when it gets on I the do. court, whatever temperature it's like, it says it's 21. It does not feel like 21. No. It's more like 30. This is an incredible physical match. And it's just been impressive. Oh. Oh, just the points these guys are playing and, and the level that we are at, especially Borges. This is the first real look I'm getting of him. And it's just a pleasure to watch. Love the thing. a few errors creeping in and that's it's fatigue it's not physical fatigue it's just the effort of concentration required at this level it's not quite where Nuno is at it's not what he's used to plus a bit of nerves a bit of ex expectation You've got a couple of days 48 hours to think about it And a big day as well for him because he's going to be the second Portuguese player ever to play a singles match on one of the main courts at the majors. And Robbie, he press after he beats Davidic Fakina. Fakina, and yep. then he beats Medvedev. There's int excuse me, uh, Dimitrov. Dimitrov, there's interest. Yep. Phone rings, friends, family, yep. everything accelerates. Uh, Zhao Sosa, the other one, in case you were wondering, I think he played Nadal's centre court at Wimbledon, round of 16 there. Big day. He's 
He's given a good account of himself, no question about it. He's in a spot of bother here at 1540. Two break points. It's not going to work. It actually wasn't a bad idea. Shaped up for the drop shot and then just shaved through Medvedev it. Medvedev leads his three games to one. Completely wrong-footed Medvedev just cooked it a little long. And that, that, to me, was not a tired game physically. It was a tired game mentally. Just concentration deserted him. Unforced errors. And Medvedev doesn't need much of an invitation, does he? No. Just all over you. Net for serve. Well, he's a, he's a constant, isn't he? He's like waves just rolling into the shore. He just keeps coming. Oh. Fairly big waves at that, Robbie. Yeah, Nesre size waves. Interesting, Robbie, because where is that wave? Which country is that in? Well, that's exactly why I used it, right? That's right. You know that, Mark. Yes, I know. I, know. I just want to make sure that you know. <laughs> well, you know that, knows. You know that I know that you know that I know. <laughs> yeah. Great documentary on that particular break. Yeah, the 100 foot wave. Watched it on the plane home. It is phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Great surfing spots of the world in Portugal. Nazare. And that's one of the great backhands. Very, very short. So adept at taking the pace of the serve on this backhand wing. Look at that. that look at the racket travel. Six, eight inches. If you get the timing right, it doesn't have to be an extravagant swing. Yeah. Big day out here for Borges. So big day in the Koenig household as well. My oldest, 25 today, so shout out to Kyle. On his birthday. 40, 30. What a wonderful job Giselle has done in raising that young man. You know it. A good contest, but Medvedev just started Medvedev to weave his one. magic. He leads 4 1 in the third. Finally, he won a point off the drop shot. <laughs> it was more of a short slice, wasn't it? Yeah, I love it. So we see here, this has been so effective for him, but he's behind the baseline, so it's, it's more of a short slice. Dragging Medvedev forward, but he's too quick. You fooled by that? The drop shot has been more effective. A lot of left hand. Just watch the left hand of Medvedev. So he's got big separation. Just get that left hand, hooks it around the ball. Here's the short slice. It's almost like a lefty forehand, isn't it? Yes. Time. Of course, we were speaking of Maria Sharapova a little earlier. I used to watch her. Warm up hitting backhands and inverted commas with that lefty forehand grip. It's a very natural feeling for the double handers. Challenge now for Borges is to keep Medvedev honest. You have a sinking feeling down two sets to love, 4 1. You've thrown everything at the number three seed. You haven't come up trumps. You can check out. Or does he hang tough, hang on to serve, make Medvedev serve it out?
great comment from... I Did sat you know? down with Guillermo Vilas one day, Robbie. Yes. And uh, he was the Nadal of his day. Yes. He was the bull. And he said to me, you know, when you play tennis, because there's no time limit, you haven't won until your opponent knows he's lost. So in other words, you've got to squeeze the life out of him. Absolutely. Suck the belief out of him. Not enough. And the best players will do that. I want to ask a question to both of you guys after this point regarding Medvedev. Um, I'm just sitting here Don't watching both. We're talking a lot about Borges, but Medvedev, if you had watched this kid when he's 16 years old with the style that he has, his arms and limbs going everywhere, and someone told you in a certain amount of years he will be Grand Slam champion, number one in the world, would you believe it? Okay, Borges. Look, I'll be honest with you. I There's two Medvedev things sometimes I look at young players. If, if they keep finding the middle of the racket, I find that interesting. I think because that's a that's a quality, you know. It's a repeatable swing, even if it looks a bit funky. My other, the other thing that always um, strikes me is if I just see raw athleticism. So I'm not sure what I, how I would have judged Medvedev because athletically, as you say, he looks a bit ungainly. Yep. Well, but he does find the middle, and I'm assuming he found ways to win. I'll just add to that, Mark. Thing I, I would add to that is by saying it just shows you how important important tennis Love intelligence it, is, right? Because you can have all the shots, you might look like an amazing player and an amazing athlete, but the mind is the glue that, that puts everything together. And that's where he is head and shoulders above a lot of other players. And sometimes, Mark. It's, it's the Fifth one nine. ingredient that's a lot harder to pick up. It takes a, a while longer, whereas someone who's got amazing shots and amazing athleticism, you can pick that up in half an hour of watching them play, right? Oh. But you watch someone like Medvedev, you've got to watch him over a six-month period or 12-month period. Okay, what's going on here? Oh. 15, 30. There's that double fault again with the... Adventurous ball toss out in front of the body. There's no kick on that serve. It's a slider. Lacks margin. But, Mark, it's interesting. You know, you, you get your surefire things. You know, you see young players and you know they can't miss. But there are some players that will emerge and you think, wow, okay, I didn't quite see that coming. But, but when you play them, you go, I get it. <laughs> I get it. You look at them and you think, that looks awkward. I can see openings. I can see a plan of attack. And oh. then you play them and you're like, okay. They're awesome. Miroslav Mechia was one for me. Mm -hmm. That's a great backhand line. He looked a little sleepy. Serve looked a little dodgy. And then when you played him, you're like, oh Where my goodness. That was awkward. Nothing sleepy about that backhand. And isn't he a good player when he takes the ball on the rise? Oh. I mean, that, that point right there, that, I mean, two of the biggest things for me watching this yes. close versus Medvedev is his mentality, strength, and his physicality. I mean, yeah, six foot six, he moves ridiculous for six foot six, but it's like, you know, he recovers, he plays 30 shot rallies, he gets the towel, he doesn't, you know, goes to the next one. I mean, I mean, it's physical, but. 
he, you know, he's there. He's there every time, uh, that mentally is, and physically. That, that is, is so incredibly impressive. Because there's certain guys you watch, they're physically strong, and they've got the muscles, they've got the toned legs, like this and that. But my goodness, it's just... Uh, I think that's one of the things that really has impressed me sitting this close to him. I, I just shake my head watching him play, and especially these, these points, the way he's going about doing his business. Yeah. And you look, it's a bit like Rublev. I was surprised how thin yes. Rublev was on the court when I was sitting where Mark is today. And there's nothing of Medvedev. I mean, side on, you nearly miss him. Yeah. So that light frame must help in terms of endurance not having to carry any extra weight, good strength to weight ratio. Well, he's just a little frustrated here. He sort of wants this to be over, thinks it should be over. But he showed Borges a lot of respect in those first two sets, and that's what he has to do here. He's fired a few big second serves here, almost dismissively, like, let's get this over and done with. But he's just, he's got to stick to task. There was a backhand line there. That's probably the one that I've, I've missed today from Medvedev. I think it's such a good shot. Yes. This is the short ball that came from the backhand line. And it doesn't come in a lot, but he certainly knows how to put the volley in the right place. Yeah, that was better than most for Medvedev. balls did nothing or uh -huh. showed him on the way forward my goodness did he step in and rifle that and that that was acceleration from underneath the height of the net that was not easy uh -huh. yes. this is exactly what i'm talking about he goes straight at you Oh, he's finally going to get his towel, <laughs> but he just grabs the balls, goes straight to the line, bounces the ball, and then just goes to work. It's the first time, you know, having a little bit more more time here between serves, but it's just, it's like machine-like. So he's used the full time allotment here, two seconds to go. Gotta love it. Despite being down two sets to love Rogers. and the break. Porsche is still wanting to make this competitive. I guess when you're hitting the ball that big, you're going to misfire a couple. Advantage, method in. Have one more ace right now. Make it a nice round number of five. Again, never as good as. Just too much experience on the other side of the net. Oh.
Yeah. 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 The kind of experience, the kind of feedback you get after playing a match like you play today. I mean, just try and quantify the value of that. Well, I, I think the big thing, Robbie, the encouraging thing is that Borges would feel that his game style is relevant. He's got the weapons. He's got the tactical nous. Yes. He's got the skill set to be really competitive, obviously, against a guy as good as Medvedev. Oh. Probably what he might have learnt, or what he is learning as we speak, is just the level and the duration Popular. of the level that you have to maintain in Grand Slam tennis against these very best players. And not just talking about the, the physical level, but the, the level of concentration that you have to maintain. Had the opportunity to play Andy Murray, the challenger, in Nottingham, but Carlos Alcaraz. And Barcelona was an awakening. Oh. Oh. There it is again. Love it being ball out in front, the slider. You know, I think the other thing, Robbie, that's really good, when you, when you start to play at this level and you start to play the bigger tournaments, you start to practice with the better guys on a more regular basis. And the more you practice with them... Oh. The less mystery there is around them, you start to go, hang on a minute. It's good, but... Oh, that's bad luck. 15 on. Close call, we'll get a look at that. He's not sure. Didn't ask the question, just asked the question of his coaching corner. Again, that, that, that first serve, I know Wally, we speak about the ball toss being so important and he's does get in front, but he finds a way because at the end of the day, he is six foot six. He's not an Isner, but he is six foot six, and that definitely helps. At, at six six, you can hit down into the court. Exactly. Oh. Anything below, the ball has to come up off your racket initially. The spin brings it down. Oh. But that is. 30, an interesting trajectory for a second serve. Not much shape. He's made it! A forehand that has seared the line. And Nuno Borges is back in business. Medvedev leads by against the ball. Those from Mississippi State will be delighted because one of their own has kept this contest alive. And Mark spoke about just how quick he is between serves and I think to his detriment in that game for Daniil. He rushed. He rushed a couple of second serves. Two double faults. Tough to hold serve when you fire two double faults. And that was the final reply. Took his chance. Just guides it down the line using the pace. 
from Medvedev. Yeah. He likes it. Careless yeah, game. Oh, no, no, Borgia certainly has given a fantastic account of himself. Two and a half hours now. He has been going at it. Aaron Tongs with Daniel Medvedev. Medvedev just served for the match. Broken. But Borges is not out of the woods yet. Interesting nine double faults from Medvedev and, and twice he served two in, in the one game. You don't see that too often on tour. Oh, he's practiced in the art of deception. Well, Robbie, you just knew that he would make the connection, didn't you? Man is deep in the peace. court. Wait, peace. Deep left, go short right. Great pass. The best passes are down the line. Got it right on that occasion, did Medvedev. Stinging pass from well behind the baseline. Said we haven't seen a lot of it in this match, but it's a good shot from Medvedev. It just starts to open things up for him. Medvedev has arrived at match point, and he's got two of them. Gutsy second serve, 165, but out wide to the forehand. That's the biggest miss we've seen from Medvedev so far. Boys, that second serve was at 149, and that forehand was at 179, I'm pretty sure. Conservative return, wasn't it? Just made sure of it, but up the middle of the court, and he was up to the task. Keeping the dream alive with some good old school SV. Atlantis Borges. I tell you what. I'm sure I'm not the only one smiling, but I cannot help and smile when I see a player like that. I'm sure you are too, Wally. Behind the baseline? Well, it's, you don't see it a lot, Mark, and there's value to be had if you get it right. Yeah, and this contest is still very much alive. 
Well, I'll go back to the two double faults in the in the previous game when he served for it. He was just a little quick. I think in his mind it was all over. Medvedev. He rushed. He was awfully quick between serves in that previous game. Two double faults. I mean, two ambitious second serves. No margin. And Borges, he believes he's he's not a guy that's going to beat himself. And that second serve. Please. What a turn of events. Who would have thought it? Love it here. Momentum shift. Oh. That's a piece of art right there. I tell you what, it was needed. 59. Goes to the drop shot again. This one, not as well disguised. Medvedev there in plenty of time to create. That's, that's a spoiling. Really, that, that is a strange mindset. Was so far out in front again and, and just rushed. I mean, that had no chance. A little alone, if it had a chance, he had to put a lot of spin. But he hit, that was a, that was a first serve. 201. What's he thinking? Oh. This is a very strange mindset for Medvedev to close this one out. Wow. He's just lost it. Medvedev bought it. I mean, I understand that he likes to, he's not that guy to take his time and go to the towel every single point, but my goodness, has, is he rushing right now? Like, no thought at all going to kind of anything that he wants to do. And where is this coming from? 30, 40. Where is this coming from? The, the scoreboard was in his favour. Two sets to love, a break. This is really strange. And it's the kind of occasion where sometimes this, this red mist can just descend on Daniil. He needs to keep it together here because he's, he's boiling. Oh. Oh, that is a donation. Donation. Yes. First real kick kind of yeah. kick serve we've seen from him that was a that ball toss was actually on top of his head uh, that's the first time i saw the ball toss i've seen it in this match so far and and flip that's where it's got to be for the second serve uh, i agree if you're wearing a peaked cap it would hit the peak of your cap if you let it drop There's, a, there's just a hint of hubris about Medvedev in these Thank last you. few games. It's like, this is over, let's get it done. And he'll come out to serve for the third set after being down 2-5. But Robbie, I'm just trying to think, what, what has Nuno done in the last three games? He played some big points to save match points. He's not trusting the string, Robbie. I don't know why he was just touching his, his strings there, Wally. 
It's almost like gesticulating. He's not getting the grip on the ball like he would like he would like. And there's two double faults that you're talking about there. Again, he's yeah. he's not he's serving them in 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 pairs. Very, very hard ah. to hang on to your serve when you serve two double faults in a game. He's done it consecutively. You know, but Wally, two of them couldn't have been so different. Like the first one was an absolute, that was a, a second, a first serve for a second serve, low, too far in front, and so flat. And the, the second one was he guided. I mean, he didn't even accelerate at all and missed it by almost two meters. One, one of the, that second serve that you suggested, you know, he, he served it at 201, a 201 kilometer hour second Thank serve. What a, what a turn of events. He had this match in his palm. Oh. And you know, the tournament only gets tougher from here. You do assume, as fit as he is, and as good as he is, you want to get through somewhere that unscathed physically. You don't want four and five set matches, surely, if it can be avoided. How good is the top shot be? It kind of makes sense when someone's playing in the shade. I mean, still, to have the nerves just to pull him off the way he's doing right now, very impressive. Oh. But he's done a good job, hasn't he? He's rifled a few forehands. So Medvedev's on the back foot. Then he's played the drop shot. Picked his moments well. Ah. And now he just spoons him no pace. Borges is this cunning. He certainly is that. Oh. Yeah, please. Seed in knots. And there's not many that can say that when they're playing Daniel Medvedev. Two set points. What a comeback! From 2 5 down. He reels it five games in a row. And Borges is back in business. Oh. I must say, both guys uh, are looking good physically. Um, and uh, this is time of the day where this sh you know, shadow is starting to creep onto the court. And that's never an easy thing. Oh, and Medvedev must be wondering, where was this when I served for the match? Couldn't buy a serve. Yeah, Medvedev. You know, Wally, 
right now he's against the wind and the ball, you know, that ball toss is, is coming back a little bit, which ends up being almost like a perfect ball toss for him. On the other side, he's with the wind and he's putting that ball toss up and, the, you know, even if it's a little bit forward, but that wind is dragging it way forward and low on that second serve, which wasn't helping. Mark, I've got a question for you here. I, I want to know, in a match like this, okay, so... Daniel Medvedev, you have a chance to put it away in straight sets, but you don't. Now you take the scenic route. But let's say he does go on to win and he plays either you know, Hurricane or Kazo in the next round. How much does a, a match like today take away from your, your mental strength when you're playing in the quarterfinals or perhaps even a semi finals later on in the tournament, knowing that you were brittle when it came to closing out the match? Or does it not? Well, you're asking me this question towards Medvedev. Yes. And as if there's one thing that I told you that, that blows me away is his mindset. And, and, and how incredible he is to put things away quickly. And, and we've, we've seen him in this position before. I mean, there are not too many matches where he's had it in the palm of his hand like this. But he has lost focus and rushed. Yep. You know, and he just gets straight back to work. And that's the important part. That's what you're telling me. It's how you respond to it, right? 100%, but that said, that's one of his biggest weapons, in my opinion. You sort of look back, you know, you cover all the majors and you, you watch the players progress through the tournament, and then at some point, the really good players, they just switch on. Think of Medvedev at the US Open last year. He was playing Alex Di Minaro. He's a bit of trouble. Something clicked. And he just went on a roll against Alex and then a roll against Alcaraz. And he was just unplayable until he ran into Novak in the final. And, you know, you sort of think for, for Medvedev... Talking about him as being a title chance, obviously, as number three. See, oh. this is probably not the performance you're looking for in the fourth round. I'll tell you what, I, I, I'm assuming there's a lot of players in the locker room just watching Borges go about his business because this man has been hard to dismantle on the tour. But Borges is giving us a pretty good lesson in how to do it. I mean, guys, that drop shot is right now ridiculous. That should be illegal. You shouldn't be allowed to hit that anymore. Yeah, it should have its own representation. Too good. He read that one, didn't he? But he's done a nice job of ripping the forehand, playing the drop shot. Ripping the forehand, playing the drop shot. So he's That's kept him off balance as a rule. Of course, in Rome last year, it was Fabio Marajan who mesmerized us with the quality of some of his drop shots. Went on to beat Carlos Alcaraz there. One of the biggest upsets of 2023. Yeah, no better. So that's the point that Mark was talking about. He just gets back on the horse. I was going to say that's exactly what I went. You know, just look over his box, give him the fist pump, and he goes, all right, I got it. Just starting to see a little bit more of that. Early in the piece, just thumping the backhand line. Very effective shot. Didn't opt for that shot too often in the first couple of sets. Just started to pepper the forehand wing. Mm 
o tirar. Probably we saw him at the end of that third set. He sent a racket off to be strung. Yeah. One would assume he'd go for something a little looser as we get cooler in the day. Potentially. Again, Medvedev. Medvedev leads against the line. Well, he's halfway to winning this fourth set. It's at three love. Or, well, it would it be tighter to try and control on that second serve? I don't know. Yeah, if the serve's flying. Thank you. Most players these days, all poly, that's become. Is that a pretty tight string pattern? Standard? It's pretty tight. That looks all poly to me. Yeah, of course, with the strings, the looser the better, right? So, if you're joining us for the first time today, a uh, warm welcome from the AO 2024. That's men's singles action. Round of 16, fourth round. Daniel Medvedev already at two match points. Serve for it, 5-4. Got broken. Just made a bit of a rod for his back here. This is the bottom half of the men's draw. I can tell you in the top half, Novak Djokovic will take on Taylor Fritz. And Yannick Sinner will do battle with Andre Rublev in the top section. There's the octopus arms that Rublev speaks of. There's a fine shot from Borges. You think he's in trouble. Those long limbs and those long strides. He arrives very balanced at contact. Let us up. I mean, look, guys, it is three love, but it is only one break, and he was down that in the third set. So, you know, focus here and hold serve, and uh, just keep doing what he's doing, right? And hopefully that uh, he's hoping for Medvedev just to go walkabouts again. A lot of players that play Medvedev, Medvedev from the back of the court, we saw... Auger Aliasim in the previous round, he came to the net four or five times throughout the course of the match. Can't beat him from the back, but Borges, Borges is showing us that if you know how to get to the yeah, net Borges. and you know how to volley, there are some That's serious gains to be had against Medvedev. What is his... I'm just going to have a little look here at net points one. Let's not forget about that drop shot. 38 of 49, net points one. Against Medvedev, that's a fantastic start. That's a good percentage, isn't it? Nearly 80% success rate, and he's come in a lot. Yeah, Borges just looked at his box and said that I can't see, and I, that return, he took it right in between the shadow line and the sun line, so... Again, it can get tricky now. It's coming in almost in the middle of the court. That 
that shadow line should just about reach you, Mark, as the match finishes. Get some relief. Popular. So there it is by set first of percentage. Set number three was awful. Also the second yeah, serve than the first. Quickly he restores order to take a 4-1 lead. The best player on the planet is that man right there, Novak Djokovic. Safely through to the quarterfinals. I'll be keeping an eye on some of the potential candidates down the road that he might face. That's of course the bottom half of the draw. Novak looked a little more Lovely. playful today. He's been a bit cranky throughout the course of this tournament. He's in a better mood. Now he's through to the quarterfinals, the second week. Okay, now this is where Borges did a great job in the third set of staying in touch, making sure his man was under some pressure to serve it out. Let's see if he can do the same here in the fourth. That'll help. Fifty-nine. Is that a consequence of the ball going from shade to light? Just about dissecting the court now, the shadow line. <laughs> Important game. Exactly what took place in the third. Doesn't look pretty on the scoreboard, 4-1, but it's one break. Daniil fires a couple double faults in a game as he did in the second. Third, sorry, anything is possible. You know, I've got to say, there was nothing really wrong looking with the volley, just unfortunately just hit the tape. Got the point he wanted, got the shot he wanted, built it up nicely.
Deus. We just talked about how effective he'd been at the net moving and forward. And once again, the volley looks good. Flips the tape. The move was right. He had height on the volley, open court. Virtual match point right here, you would suspect. For Medvedev to go up a double break. It's a shame. Medvedev leads by five games to one. Team surrender in that sixth game, and surely now Medvedev will shut the gates on this fourth round matchup. Hugo can be very proud of his charge. He's given a lot. He's made this one very entertaining. But I think we're close to the last rights this time round. Fifteen. Fifteen. is pleading to the higher powers it's finally paying off just enough momentum to get that ball to go over the tape Thank you. Medvedev standing well wide of the center tee for the first time. And finds the tee, which is unusual. 14, Normally when you go out there you can hit the slider wide. And that does bring up match point. And it's his third match point. Entertaining match, sagacious tennis from Nuno Borges, but ultimately the tennis intelligence of Daniel Medvedev pays off.
He wins in four sets. He takes the scenic route, but he has got to his desired destination. 6-3, 7-6, 5-7, 6-1. And Robbie, a salacious third set. Daniil Medvedev, just when we thought he was building to something here at the Australian Open, there was that little chink in his armour. The serve, just not where it needed to be, seemed to have the measure of Nuno Borges throughout the course of the match. But of course we judge Daniil to very high standards, twice a finalist here at the Australian Open. He receives warm applause, Borges, as he should. What a run he's had here at Melbourne Park, and what a run he had here today. He's never beaten, he has to be beaten. And that, Robbie, will forge you a pretty good career. Yep, when the new rankings come out in a week's time after this Australian Open, he'll be at a career high of around 47 in the world. And it's been a fantastic ride over the last couple of months for him. He tested this guy in many different facets of his game and not many can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him when it comes to tennis intellect and he certainly did that and then some and everybody back in Portugal will be very proud of their countryman who has done so very well here. And boy was he exciting to watch. Hopefully that'll encourage more players who see that just to continue to work on their net game, continue to forge forward and improve their game in the forecourt because you can see how effective it can be even against somebody who's as good as from the back of the court as Daniel Medvedev. And I think we are just about ready to have a chat with him. He is with Jim Corrier. Daniel, it looked like you might be able to finish this off in three sets, and then it got a little bit complicated. He turned it around in the third set, so two quick questions. One, uh, what was he doing that was making it difficult for you? And two, what did you tell yourself after the third set? Because you got off to a quick start in the fourth. Yeah, th third set was tough physically because he was uh, playing very aggressive, basically. Uh, like, as soon as I would hit one shot in the rally that was not aggressive or deep enough, he would just go full power, like, uh, <laughs> was pretty, pretty impressive. So, uh, end of third set, I, uh, I didn't play long enough, good enough, uh, missed too much, uh, some double faults. Uh, but after the third set, <laughs> the only thing that was on my mind, okay, well, the fourth set is there, I cannot change it. Uh, I just hoped it would not be five sets, and I'm happy that it was not five sets. <laughs> You closed him out very quickly. Well done. I, I have a question on your energy levels because I think a, a lot of people know that two matches ago you started a, at very late on Thursday night and you finished very early on Friday morning, nearly four in the morning. We talked after your last match about the difficult recovery. How are, are, you, are you back normal coming into this match or are you still trying to recover from that late night, early morning? Actually, before this match I was feeling 100%, but he made me run, like as I say, as soon <laughs> So like third set and then uh, that's why also I, I missed a little bit too much. I was uh, pretty pretty dead to be honest and by missing too much, which I didn't want to do, I, I kind of recovered a little bit and in the fourth set I managed to raise my energy level. Probably could I do it end of third set, try my last uh, push and not be here in the fourth, I don't know. But so now I'm again pretty tired. I, uh, before the match was, was good, now I'm pretty tired, but one day off and should be fine for, uh, for next match. Yeah. You're, you're one of the more unique players, more, one of the more unique characters in tennis. And, and I've often wondered, because I watched you when you started playing on tour, your return to serve, it's become so deep in the court. But when you started, you didn't start there. And I wonder if you're a master of the return to serve. Could you give us all a little master class on the evolution of your return? Would you mind walking back and just showing me how you do this? I need to kind of learn myself how you do this. So show me where you started. You can take the microphone if you want. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, the, the thing is that you called me master of a return, but I don't think so because my return from close, I don't think is that good. Like I can, I can do it, but it's not uh, the best. And then you ask Novak or someone else. But uh, yeah, I started here, and then at one moment uh, with uh, with my coach. Uh, well, or even by myself, uh, 
You know, I would play uh, some guy that uh, I would come on tour and then there is uh, Joe Wilfred Tsonga who is only doing 220 and I'm like, okay, and I lost the match, I remember, pretty easy, no break points. And I was like, maybe should do something different. So next time I played someone who, who served uh, big, I would go somewhere here. And then I would play someone who served bigger and I would go somewhere here. And then at one moment I understood that I can actually play many guys like this because what it makes me do is when I'm on the ball, I kind of don't hit a return, I hit like a normal top spin shot because when the ball comes to me, it's not anymore, it's in the good position and stuff like this. So uh, at one moment I just understood that uh, that's where uh, my return is the best um, and I started playing better. All right, that's phenomenal. So you're going back there now? Is, is this where you... Uh you're over there. All right, so so, this, so a couple questions. I'm fascinated by this. So, God, the net's a long way from here. So, um, one, could someone who's maybe normal size like me defend the court from back here, or do you have to be super tall like you? I, I think you can, because the thing is that many serves, I return them by running to them. So when you're close, you just do one step, and you kind of block the return. From here, sometimes I do like three, four steps, and I think, uh, to be honest, kind of... Anyone can do it, but you need uh, practice. And what's good from here, it's very tough to hit it out. Um, yeah, so you can, yeah, yeah, you can uh, hit pretty strong, and uh, many times you're gonna be surprised the way it goes. And you should try. Uh, I should try. I could tell you one thing: at 53 years old, taking four steps is no longer an option. <laughs> and, and I promise you, I can miss from here. But my next question: this is the last one. I don't want to take too much of your time. I'm loving it, but we got to let you rest. How in the world do you get back up for a drop shot from here? This is like 25-meter uh, sprint. Well, th th that's the problem. Nuno was unbelievable on the drop shots today because I, I always, I always uh, bring this as an uh, example. I remember Alcaraz in Indian Wells. He has one of the best drop shots, if not the best in the game. Mm -hmm. He made like 10 uh, winner drop shots against me in Indian Wells final. So then I come to Miami and I play guys and suddenly everyone is doing drop shots against me. But if your drop shot is not perfect, I'm going to win the tournament. So I was so happy. The guys were doing drop shots. I was like, so good. And today I was not happy that he was doing drop shots because they were really unbelievable, like uh, unbelievable. And uh, yeah, I, I try to practice it a lot with my physical coach. We basically do many times uh, the, the, the practice where I do a shadow return, like yeah. no serve from here. And then I run there and then I get tired and then we rest and uh, then I go to play a match. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for this masterclass. Was that any good? At? Is that pretty good? Is this guy any good? Congratulations, Daniel Mavadev. The best interview, and my goodness, his return is amazing. Thanks, Daniel.